It's the DNP Project Podcast with your hosts, Dr. Molly Bradshaw and Dr. Tracy Vitale. Who we are and why we are here. In this episode, we will explain who we are and why we are here hosting a podcast, all things DMP Project. So we want to welcome you to the very first podcast on all things related to the DMP Project. So we're calling it DMP Project Tips, Inspiration, and More. And in this episode, we basically want to talk about who we are and why we're qualified to talk about the topic and explain um, basically how we got here and how the podcast will work. So my name is Dr. Molly Bradshaw, and I'm one of the hosts of this podcast. I'm joined by my co-host and colleague, Dr. Tracy Vitale. Welcome, Tracy. Hi, Molly. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. So um, kick us off here and start us off with a little bit about your background and how you got into the business of DMP Projects. Sure. Thanks so much. So uh, I've been a nurse for 20 years. I am nationally certified as both a nurse executive and as an inpatient uh, obstetrics with a subspecialty in electronic fetal monitoring. Um, I've worked in all kinds of areas in terms of women's health, in terms of Uh, postpartum, labor and delivery, newborn nursery, and also worked through uh, different levels of of, uh, frontline management, assistant nurse manager, nurse manager, have worked in the inpatient setting as well as outpatient um, and maternal fetal medicine research. Um, Currently, I'm an assistant professor and specialty directors for DMP projects and project courses at Rutgers University. Uh, I'm also serving as the interim assistant dean for the advanced nursing practice division. Um, My scholarship focuses on leadership and mentoring, uh, more recently focusing on DNP projects. And um, I'm really excited that you and I were able to work together and co-author our Springer publication, the DNP Project Workbook, a step-by-step process for success, which came out in March. So uh, super excited. I was able to come into academia based on my experience with uh, working with Uh, resident physicians and their research projects, as well as the work that I've done in maternal fetal medicine research. So I'm really excited to bring that over uh, to nursing and help students that are looking to earn their DNP. How about you? Oh, well, thank you for that. Um, I am a nurse practitioner uh, by trade. Like you, I've been um, a registered nurse for uh, well over 20 years but the last 15 of that, I've been working really as a primary care nurse practitioner. Um, I'm certified as a family and women's health nurse practitioner. Um, and I finished those the, the MSN at University of Kentucky, my undergraduate things at Eastern Kentucky University. Um, and then of course my DNP at Rutgers. Um, and like you, I got into academia actually as my practice was selling to the hospital. Um, I got an invitation to come into academia and I was originally a coordinator for a family nurse practitioner program. And then as I finished my own DMP, um, I started to get more heavily involved in the DMP projects. Um, and now I'm currently the DMP program coordinator at Eastern Kentucky University. Um, and I'm very um, engaged scholarship wise in the conversation that's going on with DMP projects. Um, I do uh, still publish clinically on a lot of chronic disease issues, um, especially respiratory COPD, asthma, COPD overlap syndromes, uh, diabetes, hypertension, some of those kind of chronic clinical topics um, are some of my other scholarships. Um, I'm very also interested in social media and uh, using infographics and listicles and some of the more creative and maybe non-traditional ways to disseminate um, information. I think there's a lot of power in that. Not to say um, peer-reviewed things are not important, they are, but I'm very interested in how one feeds the other and how one plays on the other. So that's some of my um, interest. And like you, I was very excited that we were able to publish a workbook with Springer. Um, And part of the impetus of my getting into the DMP project was um, I was a little bit frustrated as a student that 
I didn't think the process was very clear and I thought there was a lot of confusing things that went on. So just for example, and to speak very candidly, um, I would have some professors that would say things like, well, what's your research question? And then in the same breath, another professor would say something like, well, you're not really doing research. This is a DMP project and it's not research. And so it leaves you as a student to sit there and think, well, which is it? Like, are we doing research or are we not? Like, it feels very similar. So what's the difference? And it really took, uh, it took a lot of self-learning and self-teaching um, to really kind of understand the differences between uh, what a PhD prepared nurse does and what a DMP prepared nurse does. And so I, I personally want to make it my mission to make sure that we're clarifying our messages and distinguishing the roles and the importances of the DMP degree uh, clinically, scholarship wise, and all of those things. So that's really what kind of lights my fire is just to help students understand the process in a more clear and concise way. And that's really the value of what I hope to contribute to our profession and things like that, um, is just to clarify what we're doing. Because um, right now I think it's very, it's still very confusing. And as a student, that's very frustrating. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think that also, um, you know, you and I have worked together as um, classmates in our DNP program. We've uh, done some teaching together. Obviously, like we mentioned, some writing together. But I think also uh, for those listening or watching, it's important for them to understand how we complement each other. Um, very true. You know, with, with my role as a registered nurse, as a nurse leader, um, working as, at a uh, large state uh, institution, uh, public school where Primarily, our students are in person. Um, our school focuses largely on urban and global health. We have a, a huge DMP program with a lot of students in comparison to uh, the program that you're currently involved in. Do you want to talk a little bit about mm -hmm. uh, where yeah, you're at? Yeah, I do. Well, you know, my school and really Kentucky as a region, we're very focused on rural health, rural populations. Um, you know, I teach in a smaller DMP program. It is also a public school, but we certainly do not have the resources that an R1 research institution would do. However, I would also say we don't have some of the red tape that um, goes, you Very know, my cool. RB is a lot more friendly than probably, um, or not, you know what I mean. It, it's just a diff there's a difference uh, between some of those things so yes I do think we get to and my program is also fully online I should throw that out there um, but so there's a lot that we can learn from each other and contrast from each other so we do want to make it I guess clear to our audience that we're not pigeonholing um, it's not about what goes on at my school or even what goes on at your school we're trying to start up the conversation of what's happening across our country um, what's similar, what's different, what's beneficial to me, would it be beneficial to you or not, and, and that type of conversation. So it's more of a conversation that we're trying to ignite. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you think uh, we should be able to prepare our, our listeners and viewers for? Why, why are we here, Molly? <laughs> well, we're really here because we need a place to come together and talk. Uh, you know, um, there are uh, meetings I, I would like to throw out that we have some very good colleagues that run an organization called Doctors of Nursing Practice Incorporated. So you need to check them out on their website and uh, join and be a member and be engaged and involved. And that is certainly one platform where we come together professionally as DMPs. There are some state DNP organizations the American Association of Colleges of Nursing has a DNP conference uh, once a year, but that's a little bit more targeted toward the academic side. It's not really targeted um, toward, I would say, DNPs in practice. So I know there's smaller breakout groups, but really we need this platform as a podcast so that we can talk about the issues. And I'll throw out an example. Later, we're getting ready to record an episode on how is COVID-19 impacting DMP projects. We need a place that we can come together and talk about that. So we also want to be able to share, um, there's a lot of common messages about DMP projects. There, there's common pitfalls, there's common 
challenges, there's common issues. So a place that we can share some tips and help students and even faculty navigate that a little bit better, I think is one of the reasons. We have a vision to hear from experts on this podcast where we could invite uh, different uh, content experts to come and share perspective with us. And also um, in this uh, series, we're hoping to start to interview students, talk to them about their projects, how did they come across their problems, how did they come up with the evidence-based solutions, those type of things. So it's a dissemination piece in that regard. Um, and I would throw out the final thought on this podcast is what happens when you're done with your DMP project. So I think this is a good platform to start to catalog and interview and sort of record a history or a, a series of what are those DMP graduates doing now that they've got these skills, what is the project that comes after the project and how are we showcasing that and how are we sharing that with the group. So hopefully in this series we can sort of combine all those big ideas, our tips, our inspiration, and then the more, all the other things that kind of come into that. That's great. So uh, we'd like to share with you some of our successes so far. Uh, Molly and I have been able to work on some uh, boot camps as we like to call them to help prepare students uh, for planning their project and and vetting some ideas um, and those have been successful and we're going to have an opportunity to talk about some of those strategies um, we've been able to have some publications and national presentations related to the dnp project so uh, we're really excited to talk about those opportunities and share some of those results with you as well and um, as we mentioned earlier, we're super excited about our most recent success being our workbook. I Hold that to baby have up. it right here. Yeah. Oh, so how cute. Yes. We are so grateful to the folks at Springer for publishing our, our book, the DMP Project Workbook, Step-by-Step -step Process for Success. I think the, the title is, is really perfectly describing what we're trying to do. Some folks, this project becomes an overwhelming task, and we really wanted to take an opportunity to break it down step-by-step, -step, small, tangible, uh, attainable goals for students uh, just to help uh, wrap their heads around it. So we're, re we're really excited about that. Um, so we're looking forward to the success of this podcast as well. Mm -hmm. um, so where can people go to follow us or find us um, as they move forward besides this podcast? So we have a Twitter account at DNP Success. And we're also on Instagram, same, uh, same name, DNP Success. So check us out. Uh, we're looking to share not only our, our, our own information, but also um, other valuable information from uh, other organizations that might be helpful in the DNP journey. And I would challenge our audience, if you're listening to this and there's a topic that you would like for us to talk about, um, or cover, you know, please uh, email us, let us know. You can send us an email at dnpsuccess at gmail.com, uh, but we're happy to hear ideas or cover topics that any, you know, uh, anyone wants to throw out and talk. We've kind of got our own list of things, but we certainly are open to suggestions and ideas. So actually on the next episode, we're going to start off with probably the number one question when you start a DNP program, what is the difference between the DNP degree and the PhD? So what, what are we doing here? What's the difference? Because I think as a student, that's your number one um, question that you're going to have to answer. So please join us for that conversation in the next episode. You've been listening to Dr. Molly Bradshaw and Dr. Tracy Vitale on the DNP Project podcast. Check out the DNP Project YouTube channel at DNP Success on YouTube.